Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the matchup today. Today, Duchenne High School Valorant team is going to be playing their third place match against Clark County. We have played them once before. Uh, that ended up in a victory. We are hoping to get another one today. In case you were wondering, my name is Mr. Kilper. I am the head esports coach here at Duchenne for the esports program. And uh, this is our second year in existence. We are really excited about this actual year. Sadly, it is coming in, uh, to an end today in terms of games. Uh, but we're excited to bring you to the actual game itself. Real quickly, we just want to recognize our actual players uh, on the roster this year. Smash Bros. crew ended last week. We have Lucas Cleaver leading that team as the captain. He is a senior and graduating, which is uh, a shame because we're going to be sad to see him go. Amanda Bronner was on that team as well, a senior. Sad to see her go too. Trent Gebin Thompson, a junior. Leonardo Reyes Marquez, a sophomore. And then Jackson Cleaver and Jalen Filato, the freshman. For the Valorant team, who you're going to be watching today is Cam Johnson, our captain. He is a senior. He will be playing Ego. You also have Dylan Paulette. He is not playing today because he is with the tennis team. But we also have junior Joseph Ayala Rojo. We have Christopher Hernandez, a sophomore. And then we have Alex Messner, Alex. And we have Callum Snow as Rust Hawk. Uh, let's bring you to the actual gameplay. In case you are wondering how this game actually works, uh, the way the game works is it's a 5v5 first person shooter which basically means you are looking at the first person uh, field of view when you're looking at it. For this gameplay itself, uh, we will be playing on split. We will be the defenders first, meaning we are trying to defuse the spike that the enemy is planting. Meanwhile, the enemy, the attacker side, is going to try to push forward and attack us and win those actual fights. You can see some gunshots being exchanged with Callum right now. He's going to back up. That's, a play, like, uh, that's the style we like to play is to back up a little bit when we see actual contact with the opponents. And the opponents are going to rush in, use a lot of utility, trying to get in very, very quick. They're not willing to get behind. And Alex ends up getting a kill, which is huge. And he's going to get picked off in the middle. But Joe follows up, gets, gets one. Ego gets one. And so does Monkey. That's Chris. Just one left alive, trying to search him out right now. Spike is on site, which is good for us because they, the attackers need to actually plant the spike. Joe gets taken down. And you see the Duchenne team on the map in the top left corner all immediately look at where he died. They're trying to find that clove on the enemy team, seeing if they can get a kill before he goes for the spike. 50 seconds left in the match. Good spot for Duchenne. 3-1 right now in terms of bodies. You see Cam holding this tiny little angle. If he sees that enemy appear, he's going to be able to shoot him in the head almost immediately. And he does exactly, exactly what I was just talking about on stream too. So glad we get to see that. Talked about the team just a little bit more. Uh, this is our Valorant team. We've played, I believe, seven regular season matches. Last week we had our semifinals match. We also had our, um, excuse me, semifinals match to make it to state. Sadly, it did not go in our favor. We played a very good Woodfield team this time around, though, playing Clark County. Good skilled team. Uh, we played them last year, and they actually eliminated us from the playoffs last year. So. Bit of a revenge game for us as well uh, with a bit of a new roster. You see Joe in the middle. He actually sees contact. Two enemies from Clark County pushing forward. You see the smoke come down, cover off a little bit of that actual advantage. And Joe's getting shot through the smoke, so he backs up. He's a little bit nervous. Takes some damage. You see Ego on the other side, Cam Johnson, seeing if he can get any hits. And Joe actually gets shot down. He was weakened, gets taken down. Ego gets one. Alex gets one. And now we're just waiting it out. Again, 4v3 advantage for Duchenne. Seeing what we can do. And actually, Alex gets picked off, so it's a 3v3 now. And then Monkey gets picked off, but Rust Hawk Callum is actually able to pick up that kill. 2v2. Enemy team still needs to actually plant the spike itself. You see Callum holding mid, and you see Ego, Cam, trying to hold that B site. See if they're pushing. He actually takes some contact, gets a few hits on the killjoy, but he's going to back up. And actually get aggressive, go for the actual Ego. And you see him back out of that. And he gets the kill, actually, through the wall, which is an insane shot. Still going for the Cypher that's currently on site, too. Callum pushing forward. He's being aggressive. Cam and Callum both being aggressive, using their ability, trying to get in there, trying to get the kill on Cypher. Bomb is planted. They do need to actually defuse it. Seeing if they can find him. And he's hiding in the smoke, and Cam's able to come around from the other side. Good team play from Callum and Cam there, actually, to come around from two different angles and pick him off on the other side. So even though Callum dies there, good for Duchenne, able to get that kill, able to get that actual victory. Right now, our econ as well. It might be a little bit hard to see on the right-hand side, but that on the right-hand side where you saw 4,000, 5,000, that is our actual credits. And one of the big things about this game is you buy abilities, you buy weapons using credits. 
specifically. The more credits you have, the better weapons you can buy, the more abilities you can get, the better shield you can get for gunfights. Having a good econ or having a lot of credits is very, very important. So right now, Duchenne is going to stick with some light buys, uh, some weaker weapons. So that way, next round, their econ, their credits are going to be huge. And that way, they can buy pretty much whatever weapon they actually want. That's why you see some submachine guns being used by our players right now. Alex pushing forward. Very much, Alex is very much a fan of the aggressive nature. He usually plays Sage, which is a little bit more of a Sentinel, someone who likes to play back. But now he's playing Clove, which is a controller. Not necessarily the perfect suited for aggressiveness, but much better than Sage is in terms of aggressiveness. And Cam actually gets picked off, and so does Callum. Geo tries to get the kill, but he's taken out by Flipside. That's their top frag on the other team. Alex gets one, gets Lemonade, and then he sees Flipside, and he picks up a gun and gets knocked down too. So all that's left is Mon uh, Monkey, which is Chris. Has the opportunity to have a 1v4. It is a tough situation for him, though, because he needs to get four kills and defuse the spike, and it won't work out that way. And again, this is part of Duchenne's strategy. Yes, they lost the round. Yes, the enemy team uh, has some good weapons now. But now the econ, the credits for Duchenne is so good that they can buy whatever weapon they actually want. You see them all using the same type of weapon right now, a Vandal, which is, a, which is an automatic rifle. It's one of the best guns in the game. Uh, it's mostly the gun that we want our players using because it has some of the best aim and also has some of the best damage so we are in a good spot even though you lose the round you kind of win the match in a few better ways specifically you see callum pushing forward a little bit throws the smoke off to cover off that actual area so when he peeks out Juo gets a kill on the other side and actually that's the top frag that goes down so that's huge for Juo to get that kill on flip side in the middle peeks for some more See if you can find anything. You see Alex, you see Callum, and you see Chris all basically checking for info. Chris goes for an ult orb, which is huge. If you don't know what an ult is, that's his best ability. And actually, a kill on Alex, but his ultimate ability, which he has, allows him to come back to life. He needs to get a kill, though, or else he's going to die, and he gets that kill. So he is back around for this until he gets shot down again. Huge for Alex to do. We see Lemonade in the middle. He gets picked after he gets the kill on Joe, though. 4v2 advantage for Duchenne. And you see Alex pushing up, seeing if he can do anything. He spots the guy, spots the Cypher, gets him, and that's a win for Duchenne. 4v, uh, 4v0 advantage now. And then in favor of Duchenne, now 3-1 in terms of the actual matches. Another thing to know about this, this is the first map we are playing on. So we will play a best of three map specifically. If we win this map and we win the next one, we are done. If we win this map, lose the next, then we go to that third map. And we see what kind of uh, what kind of comes out of that specifically. With Duchenne right now in a really good spot, have a lot of good econ, uh, have some really good weapons too. And Joe, same thing he's always been doing, peak and mid. He's been really strong mid. He's not going to mess it up. He's not going to change it. He's just going to keep going with what works. Alex, same exact thing. Go to the exact same spot. See if the enemy is able to challenge you and beat you and win again is how Alex is kind of doing this. You see Clark County throwing down a couple different pieces of utility, a couple different smokes. Joe actually spots a couple of heaven, and he's going to throw out his stuns, try to get him. Alex gets taken down, but then actually the Cypher for the enemy team gets taken down. Flipside gets a second kill, huge for him. And he actually gets his third, and he gets rid of everybody except for Cam and Chris right now. So Flipside kind of turning the tide for Clark County right now on this map. Oh, and you see Cam try to get him from the side, but he's too late. And then Chris gets mowed down in a 3v1. Close match so far. Three and two in terms of the actual map itself. This is really good for Duchenne so far. He's currently still winning. Want to keep that going, obviously. Go, go, go! Cards out. Placing swarm grenade. Right now we're on Chris's POV. He's going to be pushing forward. And one thing we want to also take note of is looking at the map on the left-hand side. Duchenne is spread out. And they actually make contact. And actually Flipside and Lemonade both get their kills on Callum and Cam, respectively. That's big. And then Alex gets knocked down, too. And so does Chris. And now all that's left is Joe in a 1v5. But he pulls out his ult. He's had aces with this before. Ends up getting the one on flip side. That's the top frag. That's the one he cares about. But he needs to get four more kills in order to actually make this really worth it for him. Ah, and he gets taken down from behind. He was stuck in the same spot. Nobody could actually get him. Or uh, he could not find a new way around. I 
So he gets taken down from behind, sadly. 3v3. Close game. Clark County putting in good work. Credit to them. Great job they're doing. Uh, they're coming out very fast. They're also rushing a lot onto the sites. They definitely don't want to... They don't want to wait around. They don't want to play slow. So you see at the start of the round, like five, ten seconds in, you always see somebody appear on the left-hand side of the map where it's somebody appearing from the enemy side. You see some form of purple. Like, for example, there hasn't been anything yet, but you know Clark County is just debating about running out there and doing something with it. Contact is made A. You see Duchenne side going to A side after they hear all those util. And Flipside gets another kill. He's on it today. Gets actually some shots on Alex through the box. So now he's down to 33 and Clove comes through the middle and Alex gets peeked out from the mid. Now it's at 5v3 in flavor of Clark County. Chris ends up getting a kill. Jill gets a kill and so does Chris. But actually it's a 3v2 right now. Could be 3v1 if they're able to get this Clove and not let the Clove secure an actual kill. Chris has Spike. Duchenne is going to try to hold it. Good situation for Duchenne right now. Trying to stall some time. And actually through the wall right now, I can hear the captain talking about it. 3v1 advantage because Clove actually goes down. She did not get a kill to stay alive. And now Cam is hunting while Chris and Callum stay back and guard that spike. Searching, finds him, gets contact, doesn't end up killing him, but then Joe actually gets him. Excuse me, I said Callum was still alive. I meant to say Joe was still alive, not Callum, my mistake. But good kill, good round win. You saw... Flurry of activity. Lots of kills happening all at the same time. Really, really quick as well. One thing as a coach I want to see a little bit more of is utility from Duchenne's side. I see some util being used at the beginning. Like right now, Alex is using his smoke and that's exactly what he should be doing. And now he's throwing a lot more, which is what I've been looking for. Cam gets picked off in the mid, which is a bit of a shame, but Joe is still there, maybe trying to follow up if he's able to get going just a little bit. You see Duchenne is gonna be pushing on the A side and Joe gets a kill on flip side. That's huge for him. Wasn't looking great. Chris actually gets killed as well. Rust Hawk, Callum gets a second kill. Alex gets a second as well. Gets one, gets two, and Alex cleans up with a nice three-piece to secure that actual win. Good play by Alex. Glad he pushed forward. Glad he's using his abilities to the fullest. Alex, in case you don't know anything about him, he is a freshman here at Duchenne High School. He's uh, also a member of the hockey team. He's also played soccer before. Fantastic player. He's on a Rocket League team, too, and actually last year, uh, or excuse me, last semester for the fall season of Rocket League, the team he was on, they made it to state championships last year, and they sadly got second. But uh, speaking as a coach of that directly, what a fantastic match to actually watch that was, too, all the matches the Rocket League team had. However, back to Valorant, the one that matters right now. I hear Alex talking in the background, talking about which side is good for them. And actually, Duchenne is going to be pushing off B, and they're going to be rotating to A because they've seen a lot of presence on A, so they're going to be pushing there. And Callum, a little cheeky position, rat-like behavior, but gets the kill on flip side. And then behind him, the Cypher is actually going to pick up Callum, but it's worth it to get rid of that top frag. Chris gets two, actually. Both headshots. Another rat-like behavior, but gets a good kill. Seeing what he can do more. 3v2 advantage now because actually uh, Mastodon is going to pick off Joe up top. You see Alex hunting again. He likes to do it. He likes to hunt. See if he can get it. Gets the kill on Killjoy. One more. Cypher gets him. Two-piece for Alex. And he's top frag right now. 11-7. and seven. Good play for him. Great play by... Just talking about it a little bit. Callum and Chris. Fantastic play. Finding a really off angle. One that a normal person wouldn't generally go to. Really surprise him. And able to take advantage by sending that, uh, that cubby, basically. And taking advantage of that. And you heard me earlier say rat-like behavior. It's, it's rat-like because you sit in a corner, you just kind of hang out there, you're near the wall and stuff like that. So that's a term in the actual video game community is uh, you're playing like a rat. You're sitting in the corner, you're hanging back, you're not really going out and searching. Callum pushes forward again, go into the exact same spot. Alex pushing forward too, throwing out smokes. And Callum gets another kill. Gets two kills, actually, this time. And those are the top two players for, uh, for Clark County. So huge on him. Chris actually gets one as well. And now it's a 5v2 advantage. And honestly, 
Two for Chris as well. Was not expecting that to really work out for Callum, but works out in a huge way. Can he get the three piece? And he does. Good for Callum. 3K. Fantastic play by Callum to get three piece there. Two top frags, and then he picks up a third to make it nice and clean. Duchenne right now rolling. Tons of econ, tons of smart play style. And the, the pace of this game is really, really quick. I think mostly that is being set by Clark County. Trying to go fast, trying to kind of to push the speed a little bit. But credit to Duchenne, they are going with it. They're not slowing down. They, they want to be just as fast, if not faster. They're not waiting for Clark County to really set the pace very heavily. Duchenne is going to do it as well. You see Cam there, he sees the actual util being used by Clark County Mid, so he backs off. Gets a nice kill through the smoke on Lemonade, who's playing Clove. Cam's looking a little bit. Joe throws some util. Here's them actually coming. Alex pushing out, gets one garage, sees one garage, and gets him. Gets Magellan. 5v3 advantage in favor of Duchenne. Hope to make use of it. Chris coming around for the long flank. Hopefully the enemy will still be there when he gets there. Alex pushes up, trying to pinch them, actually, with Chris in the exact same spot. Sees nothing currently. Callum actually gets a kill on the other side of the map. And he gets two, actually. He gets picked off, but he gets two. So that's definitely a trade that's worth happening. Joe's going to be pushing forward. That's Joe. Gets that last kill. 8-3 in terms of round advantage for Duchenne right now. They've really swung it in their favor. Last round before the switch. And this round will be the final round for defense for Duchenne right now. They're going to switch it up. They will be on the attackers next. What would be really good is going into this half 9-3 and three as opposed to 8-4. and four. That's kind of just like a small mental thing of the game, but it would obviously be useful. Joe, you see, holding that actual angle with the operator, see if he can get a kill with that. Right now, Callum throws out his smoke to slow down the enemy. And Chris pushes forward, places his turret down, and that will detect if anybody's pushing forward. Alex waiting in the spot, ends up getting taken down by Flipside, but he uses his ult, which is dangerous. It might not actually work out for him, and he doesn't work out for him. He gets picked off as he uses his actual ult. It's dangerous. Uh, for what his ult actually does, actually, can't talk about it right now. You see Chris getting contact, and he chases through, and he actually gets Lemonade. Lemonade uses his ult, which is the exact same. He's back around now. Chris chasing him, ends up getting picked off because he's chasing him. 2v3 in favor of Clark County right now. All that's left is Joe and Callum, and now it's just Callum, and he ends up trying to get the kill, but Flipside gets four. Ends up taking him down. Switching sides. So Duchenne goes in. To halftime, eight and four. They will now be on the attacker side, which means they're going to be trying to plant the spike. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Clark County is going to be trying to defuse the spike. Or, and both sides will be trying to basically get rid of the actual enemies as well. Duchenne seems to be opting for a B side push right now. It'll be interesting to see what they do, whether they're trying to go in quick or whether they're trying to play a little bit slow. Duchenne likes to opt for basically anything that works at the actual time. We're, uh, we're big in the variety. We're big in the versatility. We don't like doing the same thing every single time. As of right now, it looks like we're going pretty quick. Uh, Cam and Alex not slowing down unless they actually see contact. And Alex actually picks up contact. Doesn't end up getting a kill yet. Ends up getting it now. Heals a little bit to make sure he's going to be fully healed. Alex goes in. Chris, rest of Duchenne team running in, takes down the actual turret, but then actually Juo gets picked off, and Ego gets another one to basically even out that trade. 4v3 in favor of Duchenne right now. Planning the spike is Chris, and then we see 4v2 because Cam is able to pick up his next one. Cam goes down. Callum goes down. 2v2. Chris in a bad spot, a tough angle. He actually gets picked off because he's in such a tough angle. Just Alex left alive. 1v2. Good situation for him. One he likes to be in, actually. He likes the pressure. He thrives on it. He's going to be pushing forward, waiting for the actual defuse. Sees him, trying to get him. Gets one kill. Oh, and Clark County is going to hold the defuse. And the spike will be defused, and Duchenne will lose that actual round. You saw uh, Alex get a kill on flip side, but he also ended up hitting 
the player who was defusing and even though he headshotted him and that does a ton of damage it wasn't enough to actually get him off the spike itself so that was a smart play by clark county to keep holding the spike while one of their players was watching the point where alex was currently standing at great play by them to ensure that they got the actual spike defused that was also a 5v2 excuse me a 4v2 advantage for duchenne so good for them to basically come out of that scenario with a win you see duchenne is going to opt for a lemonade with the guardian picks off ego Duchenne's going to try to rotate, but Lemonade picks off Callum as well. And Alex gets one. Picks up the actual weapon, because it's obviously better than what he currently has in a pistol. It looks like Joe, it looks like Chris, and it looks like Alex will rotate the B-side. Alex is going to play a little bit more mid. Chris picks up a kill, which is good. 3v3 now. Chris goes for plant. Ooh, he's going for a new area, actually. It looked like he may have had a misclick there. Lucky enough, he still is able to get off the actual spike. And Alex gets a pick mid. Huge. Chris picks up a good weapon. Don't know where the enemy is currently. Trying to find him out. Trying to just get any form of info. We want to know where the enemy is if we want to actually get rid of him. And Chris is able to pick up another kill. And Alex gets his third. Good round by Duchenne right there. Had a quick kill early that may have uh, hurt some of the actual morale, but then they come around with it. Good for them. Good win by Duchenne. Need a drop. As of right now, 9-5 in favor of Duchenne. Good look for them. Uh, in case you are also wondering, the, fine, the round you need to reach is round 13. You need to reach 13 wins first. If you happen to tie 12 and 12 between both sides, you will go to win by two, basically. Uh, it's overtime, so you'll need to win two in a row. It's win by two scenario, so you need to win 14-12 or 16-14 or 19-17, which actually just happened in the pro scene recently. Uh, but hopefully we won't get to that point. Hopefully Duchenne will reach 13 without having to go to an overtime. Alex gets a pick with the Guardian in mid. You see Cam holding the other side, hoping to get uh, the other angle. Joe, Chris, and Callum pushing into the middle. Callum ends up getting the kill. He's deadly with the Bulldog. Ends up getting a second close, but he actually whiffs a couple of the actual shots. Chris is still planning, gets the actual plants off. Callum searching, trying to get that kill on the sky, which he was able to miss earlier. Chris actually ends up getting it with Callum's help on the assist. And earlier missed it, but Ego and, or excuse me, Cam and Alex both got picked off. So now it's a 3v2 advantage. Joe taking shots, gets him on the garage. And now we have Joe and now we have Chris in a, one, in a 2v1 situation. Chris trying to find him, but backing up just a little bit. This is the defensive side. Once the spike is planted, all you gotta do is back up and wait, and that's what Joe does. He waits. And he ends up getting the kill, ends up securing that round win. 10-5 in favor of Duchenne. They don't have a single life worth saving. Need a drop. Need a drop. I need this. Need a drop. Duchenne is going to opt this time for an A push. Be interesting to see what they do here, whether they want to go slow or whether they want to go quick. Let's see what we can come out with. Alex is immediately going to throw smoke. So is Callum. Shot a hold on a couple sides. Juo actually saw Lemonade pushing forward, so he actually takes the kill on him. And then Duchenne is just going to go. They have the advantage. They have the man. They want to go ahead and get that spike planted as fast as possible. If they can get the quick pick, they want to take advantage of that. They don't want to give Clark County time to basically reconvene and refocus. You see all of Duchenne playing on the site right now. Uh, this is both good and it can also be dangerous. If we're all playing on site, they know where we are, but if we all spread out, we run the risk of being picked off one by one. But working for Duchenne, we're actually going to go out and hunt. It's going to be Callum, it's going to be Ego, or excuse me, Cam getting a couple kills. 5v2 advantage, 5v1 advantage. Going to be tough order for Clark County right here with a 1v5. Searching for him, trying to find him. And they end up finding him, and Chris is able to get that actual kill. 11-5 in favor of Duchenne. Fantastic playstyle from them right now. Dominating on offense, wanting to get in, wanting to get the spike planted. And then once that spike is planted, having some people go out to hunt. Fantastic play by them. Out. 
I wish you I wish all those watching could be in here to listen to the actual comms of the players. Sadly, when we have the comms of the players, we can't necessarily have it along with someone commentating over it, but hearing them talk, hearing the strategy being played, it's very good. Alex ends up getting the kill, but then Oh, but then he actually ults to distract him, and as of right now, it's a 4v3, it's a 3v3 in favor because Callum is actually able to get that kill, but that could have been very, very bad for Duchenne if they did not take advantage of that ulting clove in terms of the game. Alex currently is ulting. He needs to get a kill or he needs to get a damage assist, and he is actually going to perish because he does not get that actual damage assist. Right now, 2v3 in favor of Duchenne. They're separated right now. It's Callum and Chris. Callum on site, Chris playing a little bit off, trying to actually get the spike. Ends up getting a kill on Magellan. Huge for him. 2v2 advantage. Still need to pick up the spike. Still need to plant. And he doesn't check for flip side, and Callum gets picked off simultaneously. Round loss for Duchenne. Still in a good spot, though. Has some good econ as well, bringing that point back up again. Heavy econ from Duchenne right now. Tons of cash. Flush with cash is what, how we like to say it. Two more rounds will secure the victory for Duchenne on this map. However, uh, one of the big things with this game, it's it's all momentum. It's very much based on the fact that you carry the momentum with you from round to round to round. Uh, in fact, I was playing a game earlier. I was winning 8-0 with my team, and I ended up losing that game 13-10, to I believe. It's just the momentum. It can swing in favor, and it can swing against you. A lot of it is keeping it with you. Duchenne is trying to keep that momentum right now, pushing forward. And actually, Alex will push forward, get that good kill, and Magellan will die on sight. So 5v3 advantage for Duchenne. Keeping that momentum like I'm talking about. Swinging in, not giving the enemy a chance to breathe when they find out where they actually are. You see Alex holding that off angle, watching from behind. Ego is going to be peeking mid, uh, not getting anything yet. 4v2 in favor of Duchenne right now because Alex is able to get that next kill. You see Duchenne playing on site, playing it the smart way. Alex is going to get picked off, but Duchenne is playing back, playing on site, playing the defensive side. Very much bunker-like behavior. They do not want to leave their bunker. They like the safety of it. Flip side actually gets a kill on Callum. That's huge for him. He gets actually a heal to come back. Joe gets a kill and Cam gets a kill to secure that victory, though. So even though Flipside gets that kill on Callum, doesn't matter. Two Match remaining point. players stepped up, gets their respective kills, ends up securing it. One more round win for Duchenne. If they end up winning this round right here, that will take us through map number one. This is split. Map two is actually going to be Breeze, if I'm not mistaken. And Breeze is a very open map. Uh, you'll probably see a couple more of our players use things like sniper rifles on that actual map. But right now, don't want to focus on it too heavily. Still got to win this match. Like I said, it's momentum based. And right now, Duchenne has it, doesn't want to lose it. Alex is going to immediately throw smokes. Joe will actually use his ult, hunting, searching for him again. What he likes to do, uh, part of his ult as well is that it's on a timer. So he needs to get kills to basically keep it going. So that's why he's going to still just keep on running, try to find anybody. Alex actually gets picked off from top site. Joe's still searching, trying to find anyone. Cam gets a kill in the background. And Joe is not able to get anybody with his actual ult, so now he's back to a weapon, which is not necessarily advantageous. Flipside ends up getting a kill on Callum, 3-3. Three and three. Joe gets picked off from the side up top. Cam checking multiple angles. Can't check them all, though. Ends up getting the one that he needs to, the two kills he needs to, actually. Chris down on side. Chris in a 1v1. Ends up getting the kill on Flipside. Huge kill by Chris to secure that actual map. So Duchenne will take that one 13-6. And we will bring you to the next match in just one second.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking you back to the game here in just a second. Like I said, we'll be on Breeze. It's a bit more of an open map. Uh, Clark County has opted to go for offense first. And if you're, in case you're wondering why I stopped talking right there, I just had my player walk up to me and ask if he could play a new champion. Obviously not. He is going to play what actually works. Uh, but we will be playing on Breeze. Longer sight lines, uh, a little bit tougher in terms of aim training, basically. It's going to come down a lot more to aim this time around. Uh, last time we played Clark County on this map, Flipside was their player, and he did fantastic in terms of getting some kills this time around. So we're going to see what he can do. Uh, credit to all the other players from Clark County, Magellan, uh, Lemonade, Briskin, all of them fantastic players ready to actually watch them. Besides that, we will take you to the game in just a second, waiting for a few more lock-ins, and then we'll make sure we actually bring you to that. We are going to be running pretty much the exact same uh, roster itself. So Cam Johnson will be playing Reyna. He was known as Ego. Dylan Paulette will be sitting because he's with the tennis team. Joseph Villarrojo will be playing Juo. He's going to be running Neon. Chris Hernandez is going to be known as Monkey in the game, and he will be playing Killjoy. Alex Messner will be playing Clove, and his name is Alex. Very easy to remember. And then Callum Snow is Rustock. He will be playing Omen in this game. So let's go ahead and bring you to the match itself. Going against the pretty much the exact same comp uh, that was happening last game. For Clark County except that this time they will actually be playing Mastodon will be playing Gecko so that's a little bit of a change for them seeing what they can do to so talk to you all a little bit more about the program the program has been in existence for two years um, to talk about being proud uh, there's really not much else I can say besides extremely uh, as we're watching our players stare directly at each other but uh, two years in existence, we've had the Rocket League team go to state twice. We've had uh, Smash Bros. player Will Kielhoffner go to state and get fifth place. The Rocket League team has gotten fourth place and second place, respectively. Um, really good, solid gameplay out of every single game. And also to mention, our Mario Kart team had Leonardo Reyes Marquez, who got first place in state. So uh, to say, it's kind of been a dream coaching esports here at Duchenne with this program and helping helping start it right from the get-go. It, it really has been. Uh, but coaching, commentating, being a part of the games, practicing, all these different things, uh, it's fantastic. It's awesome to do. And I'm really glad that we have these streams going. I'm really glad we also have a population that's, that's willing to to watch and to be a part of the game. Specifically when we went for Rocket League and we had the student body watching the stream on Twitch as it was happening during the school day, it was incredible. And being here right now, for this game even specifically, I know it's a third place and we're not going for state, couldn't be happier. And now I will stop the app and I will take us to a 1v1 situation for Joe as he goes up against Clark County. Currently gets tagged, so now Clark County knows exactly where he is. Joe has to go for the defuse, ends up getting taken down, and actually Clark County will take that first round. Huge play, actually, and wow, a, a 2k by the Cypher on the enemy team. So good play by him. Sorry for the yap fest. Should probably take you to the gameplay. Should probably be talking about that just a little bit more. As of right now, Duchenne lost that first match. Looks like Duchenne will be opting for a save round, and the reason for that is so... Part of part of Valor and part of the strategy is you want to buy for next. Uh, so buy for the next round. So as you're buying, you want to obviously get a decent weapon, but you want to make sure you have something for the next round. So that's why you see a lot of Duchenne players using pistols right now. Make sure you have enough money for something next. Cam is actually pushing mid. He gets hit. Chris actually gets basically uh, stunned, so he has to back up. His turret gets taken down. Hanging in a little bit of a precarious situation because he's in the open. If somebody walks from behind or in front of him, they're going to see him easily. He's got no cover. Joe ends up getting a kill on mid, which is huge. And it looks like he's getting ready to push forward, but he actually thinks better of it. And he hangs around because he has low health. Chris gets picked off up top, but Alex gets a kill to basically even out that score. Alex and Cam pushing mid. So is Callum. So is Joe. And every single one of the Duchenne players is going to be pushing mid, trying to find some weapons, trying to see something good. Spike is playing on B, pushing forward quick. You see Cam leading the charge. He uses the actual Guardian, trying to get a couple shots. He gets a shot. Excuse me, I said Cam. I meant to say Alex. Joe and Callum coming around from the other side. 
Meanwhile, Alex and Cam going around from Duchenne spawn. So trying for the pincer movement, trying to trap him into a tough spot. Cam sees him. Alex sees him, gets the kill, actually. Gets another one. And now there's just one left. Same uh, same player as last time for Clark County. Gotta hunt him. Gotta find him. Ends up getting taken down. He's coming out to play. Cam ends up getting that kill, though, and he's going to go for the defuse. Good win by Cam in order to secure that. Oh, and actually, it's not enough time. He has to run away. And Clark County takes two. All on the backs of their go, go. their cypher player. Coming out. Ready to play. Making some big plays. And sometimes that's what it comes down to. We like to say Valorant is very much a team-based game. But sometimes it comes down to you just have the better aim. And you can win a 1v4. You can win a 1v5. It's hard without a shadow of a doubt. But sometimes it comes down to that. The individual effort. And you see Clark County able to pull it off. Alex throws his smoke immediately, going to be pushing forward. Can't, uh, Callum up in a very high position, trying to get a little cheeky angle in case anybody comes B. And you see a couple of Duchenne players moving forward. It's on defense. Dangerous, but sometimes it pays off to be aggressive on defense. Chris actually gets picked off. But you see Cam is going to continue on with Alex. And you see Reyna gets picked off mid by Callum. And Alex gets his kill. So actually 4v2 in favor of Duchenne. And you see Alex and Cam again pushing from behind. They know he's on A. They're going to try to find him. Alex reloading. Ready to take the shots. Ends up getting them. And that will be a round win for Duchenne. Very quick gameplay. Huge three-piece by Alex. And even though Chris goes down, that is a victory by Duchenne. Spike defused. All enemies eliminated. With 26 seconds remaining. Great plays by Duchenne. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Can I get this? Duchenne is going to opt for much the same setup. Callum's going to go up high. Joe will be with him. And then on the other map, Chris is going to be pushing on the site. Meanwhile, Cam and Alex are going to be pushing through tube. Alex immediately again throws that smoke. Loves to play it. Loves to just set it. Make sure the enemy knows it's always going to be there so they don't want to push it. Chris hanging out on A site. Looking at a couple of different angles. Trying to find info. Here's some, actually. And actually gets picked off from the side because Lemonade come around from mid. Spike planted. Alex and Cam coming around from the enemy spawn again. A flanking maneuver. Ooh, gets caught on the tripwire. Tried to dodge it, but now the enemy team knows where they are. At least knows that Alex is there. Throws the ult. Alex takes it down. Lemonade with three kills so far. Seeing if he can get a fourth and a fifth. Wanting that ace. Alex and Cam, the only ones left alive. Alex ends up getting his kill on Mastodon. Gets full healed. Continuing on, surfing for something else. Lemonade gets four. And if Lemonade gets this last kill, that would be the ace. But actually... Gets stolen by his teammate. Another win by Clark County. Taking this game currently 3-1 and one in their favor. Coming down right now. Simply put to some last, some last second plays. Those first two rounds by Clark County. One by, one by the last man remaining. Simply put. Uh, this these last two games uh, this last two rounds excuse me not so much but coming down to the wire coming down to simply winning a gunfight that's what it's coming down to for a lot of Duchenne players can they actually get the kill that they're waiting for Chris hanging off in that rap position Cam peeking along with a sniper and that's what I'm talking about those long angles that we want to take Cam is waiting for it Alex ends up getting the kill gets taken down both Cam or excuse me both Alex and the enemy clove use their ults they're gonna try to stick around but Alex actually gets picked off flip side coming through the tunnel as well Joe uses his ult Staying on it right now as he is trying to find uh, find him, get a couple kills. He's searching, trying to get flip side, searching for anyone. Ends up shooting through, doesn't get him yet. His half, uh, his bar is actually halfway down, meaning that if he doesn't get a hit with this soon, it's going to be all for nothing. Gets the kill. Bar gets reset. Him and Chris still alive. Joe searching for kills. Sees one, gets one. Going for another. Searching for him. Uses the actual stun and almost gets him. Gets him four. Five and an ace for Joe to secure that round. And it may not be enough time for the actual defuse. He's trying for it. We got to find out. 
And it is enough time for Joe to actually defuse that too. Gets the ace and defuses too. Huge ace by Joe. Uses ultimate to the best visibility. Now he is second place on the actual leaderboard. Huge one. I believe that says eight and three, if I'm not mistaken. Good for Joe to come around, to turn it on, to use his ult. That's what we're talking about too, value. You talk about the value of an ultimate. You don't want to burn it. You don't want to waste it. You want to get value from it. You want to get as many kills as possible. You want to steal around with your ultimate ability. That's the point. And Joe uses his extremely well he uses his ultimate ability incredibly well almost always gets anywhere between three and five kills only uses it when he knows he can swing a fight joe hanging out on a site this time alex actually takes contact you see actually uh ego is pushing forward Callum's pushing forward too ego gets picked off alex gets a kill though Callum gets a kill 4v3 in favor of the right now ends up getting another one that's chris gets a headshot too 3v2 in favor of duchenne all of Clark County, the Fight remaining two players, are on B site, though. And Duchenne is nowhere near, so they got to move fairly quick. They are spotted. They are seen by the enemy team. The enemy team knows exactly where they're all playing. So now Duchenne has to offer up some util. Has to use some of their utility, some of their abilities to get on site. Alex uses his. He uses smoke to cover off that site. Camera thrown by Cypher. Finds more Duchenne players. Alex pushing it, using his AK. Get shot from behind. Ashley Mastodon is hanging out in the corner. He's rat-like behavior, camping basically. Throws his stun as well. That's really big as well. Joe gets his kill, and all that stuff is a cipher. Same spot as per usual. Ends up getting him this time. Redeems himself, and Joe takes two rounds in a row, both with ability and without his actual ult. Down to the wire, too. Last one went down to 2.5. This one down to 1.5. But Joe, Joseph, not giving up. Getting those two round wins in favor of Duchenne. Like I said, comes down to individual effort sometimes. I'm out of here. Gotta go. Individual effort of Joseph securing those last two wins. That could have been a five, this could be a 5v1 game now in favor of Clark County. But Joe steps up, uses his ability one time, and then just gets the kills, plays nice and easy. And I'm glad uh, Coach Coleman, who's helping me out with the stream, he stayed on uh joe's gameplay that entire time and it showed you really good valorant gameplay it's just solid stuff where he's looking how he's playing how quick he's moving decisive it's good stuff callum holding this angle sees the flip side come through ends up getting the kill on magellan as he pushes through gets the kill on flip side as well and wow a swing in favor of duchenne five to one right now in favor of bodies basically for duchenne searching for the last one and ego will end up picking that kill flawless victory for Duchenne on that one. Quick. That round lasted a grand total of maybe 20 seconds. Get the one kill, get the second, and then just roll. That momentum we've been talking about. And this has been a very interesting game so far between Clark County and Duchenne High School. Very close game as well. 4-3. This is what we like to see. These are the games that are very exciting to watch. You can see blowouts. Uh, either against you or for you, but blowouts aren't fun. Close games are exciting, and this is what we're getting with Clark County. We really respect them as opponent. We like to play against them, and you see Cam trying to push mid, seeing if he can actually respect them just a little bit too much and end up getting the kill on his actual head. Has a sniper, has an AR, pulls out the AR with his actual ability, and he gets taken down by flip side with the Bulldog. Callum is planning on using his ultimate. He is going to actually use it, see what he can find, see if he can get some ideas with it. Joe will be pushing mid. Chris ends up getting the kill on Lemonade. Huge. Ends up getting taken down. So does Callum. 2v4 in favor of Duchenne. 2v3 now. Thanks to that kill by Joe. Joe sees a mid. Gets taken down. Flip side. Alex in a 1v3 situation. Again, the one he thrives on. The ones he's ready to accomplish if he is willing to do it. No slip side is right there. Probably hiding a smoke. Sees him. Gets him. Now he's searching for two more. Spike is planning. He's got to make plays quick. If he wants to actually get the defuse on the spike and get these two kills, he's got to go fast. He cannot hang around. Ends up getting uh, actually stunned by the gecko. Still searching for him. Gets the kill through the smoke, which is huge. He's got to move quick, though. It's a 1v1 situation, but he has to go for a defuse soon. And it doesn't look like he's going to. It looks like he's going to back up because he doesn't have actually enough time. So Magellan for Clark County is going to take this victory in the 1v1. Alex isn't even going to try to push it. He doesn't want to lose that actual gun. Looking at Duchenne right now, even match, 4-4. Four and four. We're on defense first, which arguably, some would argue, including myself, 
that defense is our worst uh, is our worst of the two halves. We definitely prefer offense. Uh, we definitely like setting the pace. We like making those actual decisions. On defense, it's a little bit harder to do it, but to be in a 4v4 situation with Duchenne right now is really good for us. Sorry about that. A little bit of technical difficulties. But back to the round, so it's not like we even missed anything. Alex holding the actual angle, throws a smoke down, shoots through it just in case somebody's peeking through. Joe actually catches Lemonade moving through the middle. Ends up getting a kill. Sees the second one. Is he going to push it? Doesn't look like he's going to wait just a little bit. See if he can just make the enemy push him. You see Cam on the backside of B. Pushing forward. Cam, uh, Callum, excuse me, gets his kill. 5v3 in favor of Duchenne. Callum took a little bit of damage there, but it doesn't matter because he got the kill itself. He's still alive. That's what matters. Spike is down on B side, so you see Clark County has to push forward if they want to get that spike planted. Uses one ult. Chris actually takes it down, which is good. And then Ego gets his kill. Cam gets his kill. Chris gets his kill, too. Just... Mastodon left alive, and he will be taken down by Alex. Five e four in favor of Duchenne at this very moment. Looking good for us currently. Seven seconds left before round begins. And I believe, if I'm doing the math correct, there are three more rounds in this half for Duchenne. So we're going to see what we can do with these three rounds. Maybe we can sweep in favor of us eight to four. Or maybe it's a little bit different thanks to Clark County putting in some good gameplay. See Clark County pushing in B right now, throws the actual stun. Ego peeks around. Cam actually dives it. Juo gets his kill as he sees Lemonade basically pushing in through the mid. Chris waiting on the side, pushing forward a little bit. Now backing up to help out with mid. Callum gets his kill mid because he peeks around. Cam gets his kill, a second one for this round. Gets a, another one too. And Chris finishes it off actually with the turret, the turret kill. That's huge. That doesn't happen very often. So not even Chris got the kill. Chris's turret gets the kill. Six to four in favor of Duchenne. Talking about our players a little bit more, because obviously the gameplay is good. I want to talk about the players a little bit more. I talked about Alex already. Uh, talk about Cam Johnson, a senior. He has been the captain for the Overwatch team and the Valorant team both for both years. He's actually been in the program and since we've been in existence. Talking about him, helps out with a ton of stuff here. Uh, is a very strong leader, really cares about the team. Along with that, very much into practice and wanted to make sure we know what's going on. Just overall a great leader, a great person. One enemy remaining. Yeah, My turn. One enemy remaining. Last player standing. Like I never left. Last player standing. Last round in the half. I'm Don't be here. cheap. Spend it all before it's gone. Can't go there. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I had to take care of a technical issue. So, talking about the players again. Uh, Cam Johnson Sr., fantastic player, fantastic person. Uh, he's also been extremely influential to the program, just helping me out. Um, when I first became coach two years ago, uh, I was head coach, and he was basically one of the couple of seniors of this class who stepped up and really made it a priority to help me out because they knew a lot about the game, helped run practices, stuff like that, basically made sure 
the culture of the program continued. So I'm talking about him. Uh, he's been instrumental, pretty much, in helping us out. As of right now, talking about Callum too, ends up going down, but talking about Callum a little bit. He is brand new to the program. He's a freshman. Uh, sadly, he did not sign up in time to be on the Overwatch team, but we had him come in a little bit late last season for the Overwatch team to hang out, get to know the team. And if you want to talk about improvement, Callum has done it more than anybody else on the actual team. You want to talk about going from a player who knew nothing about this game in terms of uh, how to play it, styles of play, characters, agents, anything like that, has completely swung it around and has put himself in the position of a starter because of how much effort he's actually put in. There was one time where I think I had him sit for a preseason game and for the two hours that game happened, not even a preseason game, it was a regular season game, but when he was sitting for that game, didn't complain about it, wasn't upset by it, and then proceeded to do aim training for two hours and vastly improved his aim. Uh, so to talk about improvement and to talk about a, a kid who's very much into the game and wants to get better at it, Callum is on it. Talking about this gameplay right now, four to five right now. You see Alex actually get picked off mid by flip side. This is attacker side for Shen right now. We're on attack. Mastodon ends up getting the kill, but Judo is actually able to get that second kill. Ego, Cam gets his. So three and three right now. Joe is going to take that spike, and he actually gets picked off by flip side, and so does Callum actually too. So now we just have Cam left alive, trying to make something out of nothing right now in a seven. Uh, excuse me, in a one v three situation. Playing slow, not running, so nobody hears him. They know where he is now. Has one eye left that would blind. Uses it. Ends up getting over without him actually seeing him. Now they see him, they know where he's at. He's got to get a kill there to help himself out. Gets the one. Sees Magellan still. 43 seconds left, either gets the kill or he got to plant the spike. One of the two. Going for the kill. Opting for the kill option. And gets it. 3k to swing that in favor of Duchenne for that victory. 8 to 5 right now for Duchenne. And because of that 3k, it is 8 to 5 as opposed to 7 and 6. Huge for him. And I just gave him the thumbs up through the actual window so he recognized the fact that it was a great job. Talking about the other players, Chris Hernandez, uh, current sophomore. He was here with the team last year. If you want to talk about a guy who has a fantastic attitude each and every day, uh, that would be Chris. Always on it, uh, always celebrating, wanting to high five, wanting to fist bump guys for good plays. Very much involved with the program, very much here for, for positivity, for the culture of the team. Big into the culture, like I was talking about as well. Uh, Dylan Paulette, sadly we haven't seen much of him this year because of tennis, but I will say this about Dylan, always ready to calm, always ready to be the one to basically set the expectation for who's going to be talking and how much we're actually going to be talking. A big part of this game is communication and just saying words to give information to people. Dylan is always prepared to do that. Dylan is always prepared to talk. Dylan is always prepared to give info. Dylan is always prepared to tell someone if they need to do something different. And actually, Alex picking around and gets two kills. As I'm talking about Dylan, Alex ends up getting two. And Callum is able to pick up one, 5v1 in favor of Duchenne. Actually, 4v1 now because Flipside with the pistol is able to get the kill on Chris as he's planning. Flipside gets the second one. Still going. Alex is going to hunt for him. Dangerous. Ends up getting picked off. And now it's a 2v1. We were not expecting this, but Joe gets a stun. And he secures it. Made me a bit nervous. But Joe is able to secure it and also gets the spike off to give himself a little bit of money, I believe. And last player I want to talk about, Joseph Villarrojo. Uh, currently, who are we watching on the stream, Juo, uh, has been with the team for two years, also plays Overwatch, also plays Valorant. Um, <laughs> what can I really say about him? Uh, just That's not a shot. I'm not trying to give a shot. Uh, just a, a fantastic human being. Uh, never again, never seen him in a bad mood, ready to play. Uh, one thing that actually happened this past year is we took the Overwatch team to Lindenwood, and what the Lindenwood team said about him was he has the best gaming instincts of anybody on the team. So he he knows what to do and when to do it. He he has a really good feel and game sense for what moves he should be making at a certain time. Like he for Valorant, he knows when to ult, he knows when to use what abilities, uh, he knows when to do what he needs to do pretty much like he knows when to play fast he knows when to play slow all those types of things so that's something that is huge for a program we can uh it's hard to teach people a lot of game sense stuff uh it's it's easy to teach them mechanics and it's easy to teach them stuff like that and like you need to plant the spike you plant the spike here stuff like that but to teach them just 
the critical thinking and also the intuition to make the right choice and stick to it almost every single time that's something that's really special that's something that's really hard to to come to come around to and actually see in everyday life so to see joe have that intuition to have that that sense of the game to really make the right choice honestly every single time is huge he's like right there he, he threw the spike away and that's that small thing that is huge for him back to gameplay i'll stop talking about how amazing my players are uh you see a 4v4 now for Duchenne. Chris ends up getting the kill on flip side after one of our players got knocked down. Alex gets picked off too. So now that's all that's left is Joe, Chris, and Cam trying to make a good play. You see Joe and Chris pushing through the B site. Chris actually has a spike, so we'll need to get that down. Gets a kill, which is a huge one actually. Flicks directly onto the actual Cypher's head. Pushing on the B site, trying to be a little bit slow with it. Chris goes on the site, ends up getting shot a little bit, but it doesn't deter him from continuing on. Cam is going mid, searching for that man who was shooting at Chris. And actually, Joe is able to get Mastodon there before Cam even has a chance to. 10v5 in favor of round advantage. Spike is planted down. Good situation for Duchenne right now, holding a lot of map control too, as Cam is searching through mid, trying to find the enemy right now. As he's doing it, Chris ends up seeing him, ends up getting picked down. But Joe knows where he is, is ready to get that kill on him. Let's see if he can do it with the actual turn. Doesn't look like he's going to do it fully. Maybe waiting for the right opportunity. Ends up peeking out at the right opportunity. That's that game sense I was talking about. Knew when to peek out. I was saying go for it. I was saying try to find the guy. But Joe knew in his head that if he just waited a little bit longer, he'd get that easy kill. That's the game sense stuff I'm talking about right there. That's the, that's the big stuff, what we really care about. Look at the account right now. Duchenne is set. We have so much money. We have so many credits. We can do whatever we want with it. We have full shield. We have full util. We have full guns. Uh, the best we can basically get. Our ults are in good spots too. Uh, they're either close to being able to be used or ready to be used. Duchenne is in a good situation. Econ all the way around. Round advantage. Whole bunch of different things. Duchenne wants third place here. And I'm glad they're here to play for it. Immediately pushing on the A side. Actually, Callum gets picked off from the other side. Chris doesn't care. Just goes in anyway. Gets the actual spike down, which is good. Pushes the pace. Chris is actually going to throw his ult, which is going to stun people if they get stuck in it. Alex gets picked down, but uses his ult to get back up. Cam goes down too. Right now, 3v5. Could be a 2v5. And actually ends up becoming a 1v5. Chris's ult is still down. Slows down the actual pace of play. But right now, Joe is going to have to come out of here with an ace in order to secure this win for Duchenne. See what he can do. Watching the flank side. Here we go! Doing his best. Uses his ult. Gets one kill. There comes that ult again. Gets one. That's the second one. Surgeon for Clove. Surgeon for it again. Gets another. Gets a third. Gets a fourth. Excuse me. And Joe gets four. Ladies and gentlemen, a 1v5 situation. That should have... I'll be a thousand percent honest. Should in almost no way work for Duchenne. Joe swings in favor with his ultimate ability. That's the game sense. That's that's fantastic play. And Joe is top frag right now because of those types of plays. He's playing it perfect. 12v5 in favor of Duchenne. One more round win. Game over. See if Duchenne can get it here or it might take a couple more rounds. Cam sees someone too. Definitely doesn't want to peek that very quick. Got to back up just a little bit, maybe play a little bit longer. Ends up pushing and ends up getting taken down. Callum gets the trade though. Doesn't necessarily matter too much. Four and four. And now it's a 4v2 in favor of Clark County. All that's left is Alex and Chris. See what they can do. Chris is hanging out in the middle in a dangerous spot because if they spot him, he is down immediately. Alex is going to push with him, see if he can get a kill. Chris sees him. Doesn't stand still, though. Can't get the actual shot on. Looking through the middle, searching for somebody. Alex is pushing around through behind. Chris is going to join him. Alex trying for a kill here. A kill here mid. Ends up getting hit. Chris goes down. Just Alex left. 1v4 situation. Ends up getting taken down by flip side. A 4K for him. He was feeling it that round. He did not want to go home during that round whatsoever. No matter what. Can I get this? 12 to 6 in favor of Duchenne. Few less ults. Few less creds. Duchenne just needs that one though. Again, momentum. That's what matters. Momentum is the main thing that matters in this actual game. So we don't want to let it swing. 
right now, pretty much stagnant. I would say Duchenne has more of the momentum, but all it takes is one or two rounds, and Clark County is there to take it for themselves. That might swing it. Actually, no. Joe's able to pick it up. Four and four. Again, another way to start the round. Four and four, as opposed to five and three. Or five and five. Alex gets another, or gets his kill. Callum gets his. Right now, good situation. And it is a 1v4 situation for Clark County in order to keep the game going. Lemonade gets one. And that's on Cam, which is big. But Callum ends up getting the final kill. Through the wall, headshot. Final game. And that will end us this year. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, for final remarks. I just got to make sure that we take a picture of this scoreboard. But I will be right back for final remarks about this year and about this game. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, showing up to a great game, to the end of a great season, to the end of a great year. Thank you very much. Take one last look at the roster. Shout out to everybody on these names, everybody on the screen. Thank you, and goodbye.